Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Lost Library. I am Mrs. Kriegler, and I'm going to be reading Chapter 7, 8, and 9 to you. Chapter 7, Al. I waited for the deer cat to come home. He did not come. Finally, I brought him his breakfast outside. We had both had a long night, and every long night should end with a good breakfast. Chapter 8, Evan. There was only a week of fifth grade left, but Mr. O'Neill worked his students to the end. Everyone complained, but Evan loved Mr. O'Neill. He made up the best math games and never forced anyone to share their journal writing if they didn't want to. When Evan thought about starting middle school next year, he sometimes got a little pain in his side. The summer was the only thing protecting him now. Did you see that box of books? He asked Rafe first thing that morning. On the green? Rafe was Evan's best friend. They'd been in the same class every year since kindergarten. It's called a little free library, Rafe said. Weird, right? Where did it come from? Rafe sighed. I didn't get to see it up close. Rafe was not allowed to cross Main Street by himself, which was why he hadn't seen the box of books, the little free library, up close. Evan's parents said, privately, that Rafe's parents were overprotective, but Evan wasn't supposed to know that. It smells like applesauce when you open the doors, he told Rafe, and Goldie was there. Who? Goldie, the cat from the history house. You mean sunshine. I'll check it out after school. Rafe was allowed to go to the town green after school, as long as he left before the crossing guard did. Want to? Can't, Evan said. Math packet. Their math packets were due on Tuesdays. Rafe didn't mention that he got his math packets done a lot faster than Evan did, although that was definitely true. After school, Devin, Evan dumped his books on the kitchen table, where he always did his homework. His mom walked in, talking into her telephone headset. Very good, Mr. Sloan. Now, do you see the little green dot? Click on that. No? Are you sure your arrow was right on top of the dot? Try just one more time? Ah, success. I knew you would get the hang of it, Mr. Sloan. You're a natural. Everyone said she was the most patient and encouraging tech support person in Martinville. That was why she was usually on the phone. Evan's father had given her the headset for her last birthday. She smiled at Evan and pointed to the fridge, meaning, have a snack. He gave her a thumbs up and opened his math notebook. An hour and a half later, he was still at the table. Now covered by his books, a glass half full of milk, two empty pudding cups, and a banana peel. When he heard his father kicking off his work boots on the porch. Hey, kiddo. His dad's smile, when it showed up made Evan feel like everything was going to be great, no matter what. Soon he would go into his cellar office and stay there for hours, but he always sat down with Evan for a little while first. He pulled out a kitchen chair. They told each other the news of the day. It wasn't a big news day, but there was always something to say if you thought about it. Evan told his dad about the little free library and reminded him that the fifth graders were going to visit Grantville Middle School that Wednesday. Evan's dad told him about finding a family of mice in someone's mailbox. Evan had his journal open on the table, but his dad never tried to peek, which Evan appreciated. So where are these little free library books? His dad asked, smiling again and looking around the table. Evan lifted his math book to uncover them. They were real library books, he realized, or they had been once. They had those numbered stickers on the binding, like the books at school. But these were not from the library at school. One was so skinny that it was barely a book. It was called How to Write a Mystery Novel. The other one was a really beat up book for little kids. A messy tape job made it impossible to even read the title. Evan hadn't noticed that when he grabbed it. He glanced up at his father, whose face was to Evan's surprise, bright red. First, his dad seemed frozen, but then he suddenly stood up, 
knocking over his chair and catching it right before it hit the floor. Dad? His father was already at the cellar door. Lots of email to answer, he grunted. See you at dinner. Evan stared after him, listening to his big feet clop down the steps. He reached for the taped up book and opened it. Inside the mangled cover, there was a little pocket for the circulation card, just like the inside of the books at school. Except at the top of this card were the words Martinville Library. That was weird because there was no Martinville Library, not anymore. The Martinville Library, as everyone in town knew, had burned to the ground years and years ago. He plucked the card out of its pocket. It was printed with columns for dates and names, one row for each time someone borrowed the book. The same name had been written there again and again. He flipped the card, checking front and back. One name, Edward McClelland. His dad's name. He looked at the cellar door, which his father had left open a crack. The sound of keyboard clicking came up the stairs. Two more mouse complaints had come in, his mom had told him. No matter how far away his father drove them, a lot of those mice seemed to find their way home. Chapter 9. Evan Evan had an old-fashioned phone in his bedroom, the kind with a big round dial on the front. He and Rafe had bought a matching pair at a yard sale with their own money. They called them the bat phones. Rafe wasn't allowed to have a cell phone because his parents were afraid he would catch cell phone addiction. Evan had finally finished his math packet and collapsed on his bed with a, big, with a chocolate chip granola bar when his bat phone started to ring. I checked out the little free library after school, Rafe said without a hello, and I found this cool old book about growing tomatoes. I hope there's no tomato disease my parents will tell me I might catch. Evan told Rafe everything about finding his dad's name in one of the books he'd taken and the way his dad had kind of run away after seeing it. Correction. He told Rafe almost everything. He didn't mention that when he got up to his room, some impulse had made him shove both books deep under his bed. He felt like maybe he'd accidentally discovered something his dad was ashamed of. Whoa, Rafe said. You mean, out of all the books in that box, you took your dad's favorite one from when he was a kid? What are the chances of that? That was a good question, actually. What were the chances? Mr. O'Neill had just finished a week of math lessons about probability. In fact, it was the probability math packet that was due the next day. On the last week of school, when the other fifth grade class was building pyramids out of pretzels and marshmallows. Do you think all those books are from the burnt down library? Evan said. Mine is, Rafe said, but there's only one way to find out. And Evan said, I'll meet you. After they hung up, Evan ran through the kitchen where his mom was chopping carrots and talking to another client on her headset. He mimed, going to town by walking two fingers up his palm and pointing out the kitchen door. She gave him a thumbs up and pointed to the carrot, which meant be back for dinner. Evan and Rafe didn't need to say where they would meet because Rafe was only allowed as far as his own corner. And so Evan always met him there. Now Rafe stood there calling out questions while Evan worked as quickly as he could at the little free library just across the street. Luckily, it was close to dinner time, and no one else was around, aside from Goldie, who seemed to be trying to send Evan a message with his endless stare. What do you think you're doing? I'll put them back, I promise, Evan said. He had stacked all the books and piles on the grass and was sitting in the middle of them. Rafe's notebook was open. How many total? he yelled. Forty-four books, Evan called back. Did you count twice to confirm your data? No, I can count to 44, Rafe. Rafe nodded reluctantly. Okay, start looking. Evan opened the top book on the closest stack, found the circulation card, and scanned it. 
Library book, he yelled. No, Dad. Rafe made a note. In five minutes, Evan had checked every book. They were almost all marked Martinville Library. It took another two minutes to put the books back inside the little free library. When he had them nice and neat, the cat hopped up on top of it. It was a big jump. Hey, you're not as lazy as you look, Evan told him. Who do you actually belong to? The cat settled himself, draping his paws possessively over the edge of the box so that they partly covered the glass doors. Okay, I'm going, Evan said. You can have it back. Rafe was still scribbling when Evan reached him. Okay, Rafe said. Out of 44 books, 40 of them are from the old Martinville library. Evan said, people have probably already taken a bunch of them and left a few. Agreed. And your dad's name was on 10 cards. 10 out of 40, Evan said. You don't even need a pencil for that math. Better to be safe, though. Rafe shot him a smile and circled something with a flourish. Your dad checked out exactly one-fourth of the library books in there. There's something else I noticed, Evan said. Yeah? Every library book was returned on the same day. Seriously? Yeah, there's a return date stamped on the cards, like they do at school. And the last date stamped on every card is November 5th, 1999. It's weird, right? That is weird. Maybe your dad knows why. I doubt it. I mean, I guess he's read a lot of books, but he's not a librarian. And in 1999, he was, Evan had to think for a second, a teenager. He read a lot of books, Rafe said. Yeah, well, not anymore, Evan said. I don't think he has time. He's always working. Rafe nodded solemnly, saving the mice. He's not saving them. But Evan was cut off by a long, loud whistle followed by two short ones. This was Rafe's call to come home immediately. Rafe closed his notebook, said, dinner, and was gone. It wasn't until after dinner that Evan realized that there was still one more library book to check for his dad's name, how to write a mystery novel. It was under his bed with a taped up one that his dad had read over and over. His cheek pressed to the floor, Evan fished it out and sat at his desk to open it. The circulation card was there. Like all the others, the book had been returned on November 5th, 1999. It had only been checked out once, but not by his father. Evan reached for the phone. H.G. Higgins, Rafe whispered. The H.G. Higgins? Yes, can you believe it? In Martinville. But it must be a joke, Rafe said. What do you mean? You know, the book is how to write a mystery novel. So whoever borrowed it thought it would be funny to sign it out as H.G. Higgins, famous mystery writer. Get it? Oh, yeah. Evan deflated instantly. You're right. That was stupid of me. I guess I fell for it. Not stupid. Rafe said quickly. You're in detective mode, so you have to be open to every possibility. Right. But Evan still felt a little dumb. How was dinner? Rafe asked. Was your dad still acting weird? Evan's dad had not been at dinner. His mom said he'd been called out to a job. His dad was saving the mice. Evan knew that. In bed that night, Evan looked again at the cover of How to Write a Mystery Novel. He had no idea there were books like this. Could a book really tell you how to write a book? No teacher had ever talked about that, not even Mr. O'Neill. Lying back on his pillow, he opened it above his head and flinched. From somewhere within the pages, something had fallen lightly onto his chest. He plucked the something up. It was a picture. Evan looked at it for a while and reached again for the bat phone. Rafe, Evan said, 
looking at the picture, why didn't they rebuild the library after it burned down? It probably costs a whole lot of money to build a library. And maybe it was a respect thing. Respect? I don't get it. Because you know, I don't know. Spit it out. Because people died in the fire? Evan's heart gave a strange double thump. People died? 